we are probably in one of the hottest and most important phases for the entire Cosmos ecosystem. If we look at the prices, we are seeing a slight recovery this week. Atom at $7.15 right now in the past 24 hours have been up, but in the week it's been up 8%. Osmo, slight recovery, 20%. Akash back above a dollar, 25%. And it goes um, down the list. We see a lot of coins that have been making some um, good relief bounces. I don't think this is the full bull run yet, but um, seeing Juno uh, making 71% on the week, uh, Fetch AI 64, Injective, Absolute Mad, run in the past couple of weeks, $14, which is crazy, and also now ranked in the top 50, um, also reclaimed a billion dollar in market cap. Mars Protocol, I talked about this last week, had a very, very nice bounce um, since then. And the list just goes on. So this is great to see. The market is showing um, still signs of life. And with that, we're also seeing a lot of new things come to life. For example, DYDX, which one year after announcing that they will migrate to a standalone Cosmos app chain has now launched Mainnet and is already 181,000 blocks in. Current block time 1.64 seconds, um, which is really, really nice. Very fast, very smooth. This is actually big news um, from this morning. Uh, Stakesito, our validator, we are in the active set of DYDX. I told you last time, guys, we're really trying hard to get into the set. Now we're in. A big shout out to Chorus One, King Notes, and also to Blockscape for helping us to get into the active set. Um, it's right now super competitive. A lot of validators are trying to get in. Um, but these guys helped us to make it into the active set. And as of right now, there are uh, at least two bridges that I'm aware of, one by Maria and one by um, Chorus One itself, where you can bridge your Ethereum DYDX onto the new DYDX chain. Note that as of right now, both of these bridges still take up to 48 hours, um, should take around 20, 24 hours. and um, it's not fully operational yet. Once the chain, uh, the bridges are fully operational, if you are holding DYDX, you can bridge your tokens. It should go really fast and smooth, and you will be able to stake them directly also through Kepler. And if you stake to stake C2, much appreciated. Uh, the race is now on. Now we're in active set, but the race is on because it's going to be super competitive and everybody will try to, um, to get delegations. That said, also, you can see here, Polkachu, they have built a... Um, a tracker, a front end for the bridge, bridges right now, where you can see the inflow of DYDX tokens coming into the new chain. And you can see here 5,000 tokens, 50,000 tokens, 30,000 tokens. And if you scroll down a bit, you see huge numbers here, 300, no, that's 3.9 million that is coming in here right now. And those are a lot. So these might be from, I don't know, the foundation, large VCs, large investors, but there is tens of millions of dollars right now on the way to arrive on the DYDX chain. So the validator set will be reshuffled and the chain will have a lot of traction and liquidity um, in the coming hours, literally when this video is up. Now in that context, uh, I have a DYDX full overview that's less than 10 minutes. Currently in editing will come in the next few days. I hope by tomorrow we can release it. And in the meantime, go over to my YouTube channel, subscribe if you haven't yet, and check out my Celestia launch video, which just dropped. And it's a 14 minute video that explains absolutely everything about the project, its history, um, the founder's ties to Vitalik Buterin and his uh, history, as well as what data availability is and all these kind of things. Celestia, one of the most highly anticipated um, launches and they launch with a 7.4% Genesis airdrop to Atom and Osmo stakers uh, amongst others. And um, go check out this video. It's going to be really cool. Mainnet is launching on October 31st. So that's Tuesday at 2 p.m. UTC. So get ready for Celestia. Your airdrop will be fully unlocked and fully available in your wallet if you have claimed it on launch. Now, another big news that is highly anticipated is the Nomic StakeNet v7 upgrade, which means NBTC will be live and will be 
IBC enabled. And NBCC will be the first Cosmos native asset that can be sent over IBC, which is a new um, a new paradigm for Cosmos DeFi also, right? You can do a lot of cool things. There's also integrations with Osmosis, with Kojira, and all these kind of things. Also follow Stack and Relax Validator and delegate your Atom and your NOM and many more to this validator. Saga is another project in Cosmos that is highly anticipated and is going to be the gaming hub in Cosmos. Saga has a long track record and a strong team. They've been here on my channel a couple of times. They were Cosmoverse over the years and are just really, really committed to onboard Web2 gaming into crypto, into Web3, and more specifically into Cosmos. So they are right now transitioning from their Cassiopeia testnet onto Pegasus, which is an incentivized testnet that is going to launch very, 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 very soon. Watch out for that. We with Stakesito, we're also part of that incentivized testnet, and we're looking forward to see Saga come one step closer to launch. Now, I also want to talk about the Cosmos Hub and some spicy proposals on the forum and on the um, uh, governance on-chain in recent days. One of them is Proposal 839 to fund the development for the Cosmos Hub by Informal Systems and HIFA. This proposal is very, very controversial um, for many people. Why? Because um, they're asking quite a large amount of money, right? They're asking 1.1 million atom, which is around seven, eight million dollars, something like that. Um, of which 5.7 million will be going to the teams plus 100,000 atoms um, as bonuses. And this is supposed to fund their entire development for the year of 2024. And you can see how validators have currently already voted. Um, with Stakesito, we're still assessing the situation here and um, we'll also uh, decide on how to vote soon. In response to that proposal, Brian Crane, who is the president at the Interchain Foundation and sits on the Foundation Council, along with um, Ethan Buckman and one more person who are decision makers at this point. And Brian mentioned in this post here that the Interchain Foundation allocated 3.5 million US dollars for 2024 as a budget for Cosmos Hub development. And their idea now, I don't think this is fully decided yet, but which is what they're planning to do most likely, is they, they will send these $3.5 million to the Cosmos Hub community pool, which would cover almost or around half of the ask from Informal and HIFA. So this could be considered as the ICF taking over 50% of the uh, cost here. There's still a lot more around this as to what other ways Informal has to fund their development, um, what other grants the ICF is giving to Cosmos Hub teams, and so on and so forth. So it's not that easy. It's quite complex uh, in terms of Cosmos Hub funding. But I like these interactions right now. Uh, I think six, eight months ago, we would not have seen the ICF come out so fast and respond to this. Another proposal that just was released on the forum is from Persistence P-Stake application, which is a liquid staking provider and alternative to Stride. They propose to allocate 600,000 Atom from the community pool, which is around 11%. So there's around 5 million Atom right now in the community pool, uh, or 4 million. And by the way, the um, informal proposal is around 18% of the community pool size, right? So if both of these would go through, um, the community pool would be 30 plus percent lighter. So a lot of people are concerned about the proportion this has relative to the entire size of the community pool and its benefits. Given that we are right now also at $7 per atom, this might be a big pill to swallow. Anyways, 600,000 Atom, these Atom would not be gone. What would happen with these Atom? So it's also important to understand the differences between asking for liquidity and asking for funding, right? So p here is asking for liquidity, um, which would then be distributed on Astroport, Interprotocol, and Dexter. And we have such a similar uh, proposal that passed from Stride for 450,000 Atom. Um, but now p rightfully is asking for something similar, even higher amounts to not only 
diversify the risk for liquid staking onto several providers, but also to strengthen Atom's role as capital, Atom's role as money of the interchain that will also generate revenue for the Cosmos hub. And the way this would be distributed is that half would go on Astroport, one third to Dexter, and 16.67% also um, for IST liquidity on Dexter. Now I want to talk about Time Wave, which is potentially going to be a game changer for Atom's positioning and adds massive value for Atom's role as an interchain service provider. Remember how we talked about this here on this channel years ago, even with Billy Renekam back in the days about the future of the Cosmos Hub as an interchain service provider that just provides services to other chains in Cosmos um, that no other chain provides, right? And TimeWave is one of these ideas that fulfills exactly that position. Their belief is that the Cosmos Hub's core product is Atom and the Hub's core business model should be lending out Atom liquidity. So up until now, we have replicated security or shared security that is in production and already accrues value for Atom. However, given a bear market, given the fee structure, given the adoption and volumes, this is currently negligible, right? And what a core idea here basically is, is that the Cosmos Hub would have a business model in which it lends out liquidity, not native atoms, but atoms that are still owned by the Cosmos Hub. However, it lends out liquidity positions to other applications and charges a fee for that. And they're also saying here that the Cosmos Hub is actually the only or the best positioned network to provide and offer that service. Bitcoin and Ethereum don't have on-chain governance. Uniswap and MakerDAO have completely different purposes and roles and business models, trading or creating stablecoins respectively. And the analogy they're giving here, which I think this is like, if you understand this, you really understand what TimeWave is all about, is that when a VC invests $1 million in a startup, the VC no longer owns these $1 million, right? That's the, the capital they're putting in and at least their ownership and gets into someone else's ownership. The $1 million is then the denominator for our ride because this amount of capital that the VC had to sacrifice in order to gain the upside. When the Cosmos Hub lends Atom liquidity, not Atom, but Atom liquidity, the Hub still owns the Atom. When choosing a number for the denominator, one could use the amount of capital that the hub had to sacrifice to gain the upside. So that could be impermanent loss, for example, or a smart contract failure. If the hub were to lend out $1 million in liquidity, receive a $10,000 profit and incur a $5,000 loss through impermanent loss, the hub's return of liquidity would be 100%, $10,000 in revenue minus 5K in permanent loss. When viewed from this perspective, liquidity lending becomes a powerful driver for value to Atom. This is very, very interesting. There's also a lot of collaborations and integrations with um, Stride and others. Um, obviously, this is supposed to be launching on Neutron. And what it does from a philosophical and positioning standpoint, it expands the Atom economic zone from a security provider to a liquidity provider. And this really fulfills this um, original vision of the Cosmos Hub being an interchain service provider that goes beyond security. And like I said many months ago, Atom 2.0 is not not going to happen. Atom 2.0 is just separated and cut into individual projects and teams. Now, I'll leave you guys with that. Um, I know today was a bit packed but I think it's just a lot of things happening in Cosmos right now. So it's no, no time to sleep, no time to waste, really time to be on top of the things. Read all the articles, all the sources that I shared in this video. Stay on top of the things. Do some airdrops. I might actually be doing a full airdrop review and master guide for um, 2024 very soon. If you want to see that, let me know. I'll see you guys soon. Stay safe, be good, and take care.